So here we are, I mean, here I am, over at NA Performance in Ventura. Manny right here. And what are we doing today, Manny? Everything. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have about 120K on the Honda Passport and it's time to do the major service. And when I say do, I mean, uh, not me, but you know, Manny, because I mean, my wrenching abilities are limited. All right, Manny, what are you hearing? It sounds like the accessory belt. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, it's the accessory belt that's making that noise. Probably should uh, cover that up. So honestly, this engine bay has never been washed before. I can tell. <laughs> oh, it's bolt loose. Engine now bolt loose. Oh, that's not good. But... <laughs> Too much off-roading. Too many washboards. Oh, crap. oh shit! Oh, actually, it broke. Oh dang! Yeah. Wow. So it wasn't even screwed in; it was just broken in there. Dang! Holy shit! It's a motor mount, right? Yeah. Both of them are broken. Oh my god! Is that why the engine's all like? I think that's. I think that's why you have a noise. Oh. To be honest. Well, yeah. Now that we. Then now that you discovered that, so that's something that, how hard would that be to fix? <laughs> well, here's the good thing. That mount has to come out, so we'll actually have it out of the vehicle, and we can, we could easily uh, fix the thread a lot easier. Okay. We just have to get new hardware. Okay. So uh, with a, mo a broken motor mount like that, could that cause damage? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it could cause damage. Do you think it caused damage? No, I just think it was giving you all those dumb noises. Okay, good, good. <laughs> so I'm glad, see, see, I'm glad that, um, like, the way the engineer, because I know, like, Toyota, Honda, they overbuild things. Uh -huh. This one's not broken, but I'm pretty sure the thread's stripped. Broken and filled with dirt, and this side, I'm not sure. We might have to heli coil that, which means putting a thread in it. Sorry, this isn't your typical episode of mine, but I'm sure there's a lot of you that want to know how the Honda has held up with over 100,000 miles. 109 on the odometer, but about 118,000 driven. So we just got back from uh, Mammoth. We went uh, snowboarding. Well, Nick went fishing. Gondola. Snowboarding. There. <laughs> And yeah, so here's the video. Because I have four days off and I wanted to spend my time out here rather than being behind my computer for a day. So this is a four day trip. And uh, I actually shot the footage of this 100, 118K mile tune up Shot all the footage on my iPhone, and I'm going to edit on, edit it on my iPhone tonight, and then I'm going to release it Sunday morning. So that's why we are out here. And I really wanted to do the continuation to Joshua Tree, but I just did not have enough time to finish that video. So uh, that's going to have to come in a later time. Anyways, out here with Dirty Fly Adventures, <laughs> Carla. Carla, do you have an Instagram? Yeah, it's High Desert Ruth. Oh, that's you? That's me. I had no idea. And uh, this is John. J John Kwan. Shredder. We call him Shredder. And then his 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 Lexus is an absolute tank. We were stuck in a snowdrift up to our up to my my uh actually up to my crotch. I'm not gonna try to <laughs> so up to John's hip. And uh 
which is pretty tall. <laughs> uh, at one point, the sill was up to your door. Like, it was in the middle of your door. It was almost to the almost window. Almost to the window, actually. <laughs> and uh, anyways, that's a future video, but I'm just going to have to, uh, you know, kind of please the YouTube algorithm gods by releasing a video a week. I can't let it go past the seven-day mark. Otherwise, YouTube will... Um, they, they pretty much just... Yep. Yeah, like, you get banished. You, like... <laughs> It's one of the, like, one of, the, like, the seven deadly sins of YouTube is, like, yeah. thou shall release a video <laughs> in a seven-day period. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. What does that mean there? Nothing. Okay. Sometimes water gets in there. That's all that means. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Don't get a huge amount in there. <sighs> How's that looking? Looks fine. Okay. I wouldn't know. Injectors are underneath this thing. I mean, you saw this. It's not, it's not too bad taking off that manifold. Okay. So if you ever had to do it, it's not, not too big of a crazy deal. I think the DI pump's right here. Were you able to source out those in those injectors? You can't or? get them until tomorrow. Okay. okay. What do you think would happen if I just like used uh, like some spray, like intake cleaner? Mm, no, just whatever you said you were using, like the yeah. you said you were using like a fuel additive or something. No, no, no. It was. Um, I actually have the, the the can in my car. I, I bought another one, but it's mm -hmm. a just a direct injection cleaner okay yeah well, what do you where do you put that in the tank i would spray it just past the maf sensor basically oh, okay. into the throttle body okay yep so uh i just like rev the engine to about like 1500 rpm or something and mm -hmm. just spray it keep spraying in periodically like a spurt every 30 seconds or so 15 seconds That's not for the fuel injectors. If, it, if you're spraying it through the throttle body, that's yeah, not. yeah, it's true. It's not for the fuel injectors. It's, uh, yeah, to clean the carbon deposits. Yeah, because it's direct injection, and there's no way to really clean that up. Yeah. I mean, to me, these look like valves from like, from like a Volkswagen that has like ten thousand miles. Okay, so it's still pretty good. Very good. Yeah, this is like German car manufacturers would kill to have valves that clean <laughs> i mean i've seen some minis with like 40k and they're practically blocking that whole fucking okay yeah. hey maybe it's that uh, costco gas i've been using man the detergent <laughs> 87 octane costco gas baby <laughs> yeah they do uh, look to me, to me the the compression ratio on this engine is so freaking high uh, that's why even though Honda says it's fine, I don't do it just because like just from building engines I know that compression is like sky high. It needs the octane So enthusiastically or not I would just always run 530 I would not pay attention to what Honda says because they're just Trying to break your car so you can buy a new one <laughs> do you think that goes and for that, everybody that goes for every manufacturer wow because i remember my my older cars ran 5w30 yeah. right yeah so toyota takes it a step further by making you do it every like 10k the intervals so they not only want you to run 020 but they want you to take it to like 10k 
<laughs> which is fine for a lot of German cars because they have oil capacity. They have like nine, nine or ten quarts of oil capacity, whereas like, you know, Tacoma has like five or six. This has about. This five has or six. six. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. If you had a bigger oil capacity, then yeah, you could certainly take it longer. But I mean, hmm. it's just better just to change the oil sooner. Yeah, yeah. Even if you do have the oil capacity, it's better to just get fresh oil. In it. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Crazy. Zero twenty, from what I've seen, breaks down a lot faster, especially with DI engines, because it a lot the DI, the yeah. fuel is shot at such a high pressure. Yeah. That it gets past the rings. Huh. And it it gets past the rings a lot easier too with the thinner oil. So Manny, uh, what do you think about old catch cans? Catch cans on these particular engines are not needed. Um, look, ooh, look at this, it's dry. There's like nothing on here. Usually if, if you see a car with like very oily um, outlets for the valve covers, you know, that usually tells, look, it's dry. I stuck my finger in there. <laughs> it's fucking dry. Okay. So these, these valve covers are so well, like internally baffled, these plastic ones. And they could do that because when they mold it, they can like create baffles that they couldn't if it was metal. Uh -huh. A lot of people complain. They're like, oh, they're plastic. That means it's cheaper. And a lot of ways it's better because the, these sections right here are so well baffled now that it, it prevents any oil from getting into the, the intake. Nice. Yeah, do you see any oil on there? No. There's nothing. Okay, wait, 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 wait. And more importantly, there was really no oil inside the, the manifold. It's just yeah. sludgy water from right from me. Know. Yeah, <laughs> driving through yeah. water crossings yeah, so. <laughs> and mud. The, the baffling in this is very good for the valve covers. So. Nice. If All right. You, now, for people that do have catch cans and they do find oil in their catch cans, that means they actually have an engine problem. Uh oh. Like blow by. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe installing the catch can, they kind of messed up and now it's. No, but no. you know how you see those people are like, oh, look at all look at all the stuff I got. Right, like, yeah, right, it's right. Because you have other issues. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not supposed to be in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is my accessory belt because it's really exposed to. Oh, look at that! Everything. Damn, they should have those in stock, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I said it looks really clean. There's definitely no signs of sludge or. All right, my cop, my eighty-seven octane Costco gas is working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is more your oil change. Your oil changes are. Working. Okay, okay. I thought uh, non detergent gasoline put sludge in your engine. No, that's shit that they say in the commercials. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. Hey, so Maddie, uh do you think this tune up was premature? You should do it at night. Okay. I think one reason yours looks so good is because you do a lot of highway. But regardless, 90 or the age of it, I think the age, they say six years. So needs to be done either six years or, or 90K or 100K. 100K is fine. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think that's what Honda wants. 100K actually. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. 100K. For the, the timing belt to be changed. So the belt goes like in between it, and the water pump's right behind it.
There's your water pump. There it is. Right here. Sweet. Getting some B-roll. All right, so Manny just discovered that the tensioner right here, can you point, point to it again? Manny? This right here. Yeah. So that was pretty much on its last leg, you said? Yeah. Okay. You could call it a bomb if you want. We call it a bomb. <laughs> and the story, the reason why he's calling it a bomb is because if you look at this part, I guess there's a story. Yeah. Uh, it was on Instagram and Facebook. It was on Instagram and Facebook, and someone left a tensioner, like, in a park. And the police were called, and they all thought, like, it was some kind of pipe bomb, like, with this grenade pin. And then the mechanics were all like, dude, that's just a tensioner. That's all it is. <laughs> but, yeah, I guess I could see why they would think that. That's the worst tensioner I've ever seen, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Worst tensioner you've ever seen, huh? Yeah. I've seen some with like 200,000 miles or better. And than this me. was covered, right? Yeah, it was covered. Yeah, it was the only thing that was exposed was this section. Yeah. So this was all covered by the plastic. So uh, what is all that crap? It's a uh, hydraulic fluid. It just prematurely leaked or something. Oh, well, it could have been it could have been since I was missing I'm missing that motor mount, right? Uh, no, I don't think that was. No. Huh. Right. <laughs> This thing is still solid. Let's go take a close. Little tiny. Are there, belt. Are there cracks? Uh, no, I don't see any cracks. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Well, it looks good. <laughs> I thought these things snapped though. Oh yeah, they do. They yeah. rip, they snap. Yeah, when? All kinds of stuff. Like how old? <clears throat> when they look a lot more beat up than this. I don't know. You're drag racing all the time. Yeah. <laughs> a few times. <laughs> Would have done better if I, my car wasn't weighed down so much. Yeah, maybe um. <clears throat> Maybe you should unplug like a, a coil pack. Oh, on it. oh, wow. So this bearing is bad? I mean, we can, oh. still, we can still use it, but it does feel like shit. To yeah, it does. Are you see that? Here's a new one. On camera, it looks pretty, pretty bad. All right, let's go see the new one. Open it. Just gonna open it with one hand. I got it. Okay, let's see. Wait. It's been better or it's been the same? Oh, it's it definitely spins a lot better. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's smooth. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, this one's like, yeah, this one, uh, there's, it takes a little bit to get going. Oh, so, uh, moment of truth. This hole almost didn't even drill because since that bolt was just in there, it was yeah. just oblonging itself. Oh, jeez. So I kind of like drilled it for you. Okay. All right, so those are now installed. These are those cheap prototype bolts. Not treated in really soft metal. All right, time built is done. There it is. Looks like the one you pulled out. I know. <laughs> Except this one smells like brand new shoes. Nice. Yeah. Leather shoes. All right, what's next? Uh, valve adjustment. Cool. All right, how long does that take? 
I don't know. <laughs> okay. What is it? What does it involve? All right. So what are those? You said they're filler or something. Mm -hmm. Also within spec. Wow. The exhaust is not within spec, I bet you. Bet you. So, crazy turn of events. Uh, man, he just found like a old pair of pliers. Like, it's literally wedged in between the AC compressor. It's oh, been rubbing for a while. That's what's probably making all this noise. We gotta fix your um, tranny cooler because it sounds like a like a juicer. Oh yeah, I just have to kind of shimmy it into place and zip tie it. <laughs> oh my god! Oh yeah, these are running. Abel, yellow. look See? at these things. <laughs> that, this is what's been making that noise. Oh look, they're all grinded up on the metal and everything. Holy Man, shit! That's about at least five horsepower being lost. Damn! Whoa! Wow, they don't even work anymore. VTEC's going to kick in a lot harder, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, miles on them. Dude, this is what I've been how, looking how, for these well, things. How long have they been gone? A while. <laughs> I, I bought new pliers. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I'm like, why the fuck is the belt not going on here? <laughs> I look in here, I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Yeah, when I was working on something, it probably just fell down and... Oh, gosh. Ugh. So there you have it. My major tune-up on my Honda Passport was finally completed. Thank you so much to Manny from New Age Performance out of Ventura, California. So this involved changing out the timing belt, water pump, accessory belt, and readjusting the valves. Surprisingly, the timing belt looked fantastic, and also the fuel injectors looked great. The parts that didn't look so good were the bearing and also the tensioner. Those parts were really close to failing, and so it was a really good thing that this tune-up was completed. So I highly recommend stick to your maintenance schedule make sure you have your major tune-up completed at 100,000. Also, I think uh, what we saw here was a testament to how overbuilt and how tough this Honda is.
<laughs> I'll take the camera back. <laughs>